dialogues are Mr. Zaman and let's look at today's top headlines. AHA ACC 2023 guidelines downgrade long term use of beta blockers. The American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association, and other specialty societies have released new guidelines for managing chronic coronary disease. The new guideline recommends that long term use of beta blocker therapy is not recommended in every patient with chronic coronary disease. The new guideline recommends against the long term use of beta blocker therapy in every patient with chronic coronary disease. Long term use of beta blocker therapy is no longer recommended to improve outcomes in patients with chronic coronary disease in the absence of myocardial infarction in the past year, left ventricular ejection fraction less than 50%, or another primary indication for beta blocker therapy. The guidelines also suggested calcium channel or beta blockers as first line anti angiogenic therapy. The beta blockers widely in clinical use include metoprolol tartrate, metoprolol succinate, nebivolol, bisoprolol, carvedilol, labetalol, propranolol, nadolol, timolol, and sotalol. The 2023 AHA ACC guideline for managing patients with chronic coronary disease is published online in the latest issue of Circulation. It was developed in collaboration with and endorsed by the American College of Clinical Pharmacy or ACCP, the American Society for Preventive Cardiology ASPC, the National Lipid Association NLA, the Preventive Cardiovascular Nurses Association PCNA, and the Society for Cardiovascular Angiography and Interventions. The new guideline updates and consolidates new evidence since the 2012 and 2014 guidelines for the diagnosis and management of patients with stable ischemic heart disease or SISD. The updated guideline emphasized the importance of team-based, patient-centered care that considers social determinants of health and associated costs while incorporating shared decision-making in risk assessment, testing and treatment. Recommendations on pharmacological management regarding guidelines on pharmacological treatment. Another key recommendation includes using sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors or SGLT2 inhibitor and glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist or GLP-1-RA for selected patients with chronic coronary disease including groups without diabetes. The recommendation for statins as the first-line lipid lower therapy in patients with chronic coronary disease remains unchanged. Several adjunctive therapies, example ezetimibe, proprotein convertase stabilizin, kexin type 9 inhibitors, incliciran, bempedoic acid may be used in select populations. The new guideline also suggested that shorter durations of dual antiplatelet therapy or DAPT are safe and effective in many circumstances, particularly when the risk of bleeding is high and the ischemic risk is low to moderate. The non-pharmacological interventions are as follows. The 2023 guideline also recommended non-pharmacological interventions for all patients with chronic coronary disease, including healthy dietary habits and exercise. Those patients who are free from contraindications are encouraged to participate in habitual physical activity, including activities to reduce sitting time and increase aerobic and resistance exercise. The updated guideline also noted cardiac rehabilitation significant cardiovascular benefits in eligible patients, including decreased morbidity and mortality outcomes. The other recommendations are routine periodic anatomic or ischemic testing without a change in clinical or functional status is not recommended recommended for risk stratification or to guide therapeutic decision making in patients with chronic coronary disease. That's all for today. Stay safe. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.